Hi guys, this is Cy from Cyanai Software. Uh, today I'm just going to go over the changes that we've made in Jumble. And if you haven't seen Jumble before, uh, Jumble is our random transform and selection tool. Uh, it's pretty useful if you, um, you know, you're going to uh, need to say randomly transform objects. This is really easy to use and it's the selection part of it is really useful so um, I have just have some test geometry in here and I'll just grab everything and we'll talk about the, the um, selection part first so if I create a selection set out of this and this isn't our a selection set up here it's our own selection set uh, I can go in here and grab a percentage of my objects uh, this is really useful if you just need to cull some stuff or you just want to, it saves you from going and picking randomly around. Now, there is a random seed button with this as well, so that'll give you random selection. Now, what we have added and changed into this is it used to be a percentage of size. We've now changed this to a volume. So, uh, you have a small and large volume that you can select. So, anything underneath this number you'll select. So if you want to find all your tiny items, uh, the other way you can also go all your large items. Uh, it Where this comes really handy is if you bring in say a really big Revit model and you're doing an outside scene, you can select the Revit model, go and select all the smallest volumes and you can get rid of all the like little door handles, hooks, um, hinges, screws, anything that's inside the building, which is sometimes, you know, a 10 to 20,000 little objects that you're never going to use, and it just slows down your scene. So that's our selection sets. That's for um, percentage and volume. Now, the other part of this tool is uh, our random transform, and we've also changed that because um, we've listened to you guys and see what you've needed. Um, it is basically the same thing. Of course, you can randomly transform objects in between uh, this number and this number. Uh, you can actually also just unify the position, which if you need to do, someone needed this. Um, also, you can see this in scene units as well. So right now, I am in must be in generic units. So let's just go take a look. Uh, units, generic. Okay, so let's just put this in meters for now. You can see now it shows up as exact scene um, sizes, so I'm working in, in meters. Or I can go back to generic units itself, uh, whatever you prefer to see. Uh, in our random rotation as well, uh, so if you wanted to rotate some stuff here, um, we have it so um, you can actually have limits on this, so it stops at minus 360 and plus 360. You can remove those limits if you need to. Uh, someone needed this for, uh, they wanted to go further than minus 360 to plus 360. So uh, we've added that as well. Uh, scale. Um, so in our scaling options, we have our simple... Um, scaling, but what we've added in this is, um, and it was our sort of mistake in the beginning, is if you bring this down to zero, um, you're actually be able to bring this down so that the objects are almost invisible, so you could actually randomly grow stuff up. In the beginning, what we had in this tool, and it was our mistake, was when you went down to zero, it went into negative scale, and then we're regrowing in, in negative scale, so you could never really just animate these things growing up over time. Um, we also have in here um, random variation. So if you did, and this was just so that you don't have to go through and do both spinners, it turns off your random variation. So if I'm down here, let's just go turn on auto key and I wanna go and scale these down to zero. And then over time, scale these up to, you know, 100%, let me just type in 100 here. And then now I have an animated growing object. Now I could take this further and go in here and say random selection, make a random selection of this, give me you know a personal percentage, and now I could shift these you know these keys, and you know it's very easy to just sort of get different stuff out of this. But it's the tool does what it says on the tin. Now if you've come into let's say you've um, I save this scene, come back into this, I can actually go and select all my jumbled objects and I can go reset my objects and bring them all back to where they are. We actually write the transformations that we do to the node. So um, if it's something that you've had in your scene, you have a whole bunch of like 
trees and stuff that you've uh, possibly transformed and rescaled and you want to come back in and find out, you know, you want to reset them, you can. Now, the other part of this is there is an initial state. So if I was to, say, in world space, go down and, and actually put these into 0, 0, and 0, I can make this my initial state by clicking on this. So that's my initial state now. So I can say yes. So if I want to spread these out just a little more than what I had, oops, go this way, that way, and that way. Now, I've gone and spread this out. Now, if I reset my objects now, it goes back to where I set my original, my initial state. And then we also have our seed button as well. So that's Jumble. It's pretty basic. It's a great little uh, tool that we use um, all the time. Um, and we've also put in here, so we've, we're slowly going and transferring all these interfaces into Qt, uh, which is the part of Max in 2018 that it needs to scale images if you work in 4K. So this is our first one that we finally gone and had to rewrite the whole interface. Uh, we'll be on Forensic next and slowly going through the list to get everything. So if you're zoomed in on your, if you have a 4K display and you're zoomed in, this should fix that. Uh, thanks a lot, guys. Have a good one. Cheers.